Hello everybody, welcome to part 6 of the Suzuki Bandit 1200 project. So this week on the Bandit project we are going to be replacing the slipping clutch. So I've had to do a bit of prep work, I've had to soak my brand new gecko fibres in oil overnight before I fit the clutch to make sure it works fine and I've also measured the uh, the stack of the clutch because you need to make sure it's not too tall or, or too low so I've done that just to make sure everything's right a little bit of prep work does help sometimes when you're working on your bike so now what I need to do is crack on and remove the old clutch okay so the first thing I'm going to do is drop the oil out because uh, I've got it on a paddock stand the angle of the engine the oil's up the sight glass so as soon as I take this off it's going to leak out everywhere so I'm going to drop the oil out uh, just to make my life that much easier and it does need an oil change which we'll be doing in the future so type my one do it now will I get my hand covered in oil as I take the plug out yep <laughs> right so little bit of metal on the magnetic plug, not too much to worry about. So right, now we're going to let that drain out. So, the oil's drained out, next thing to do is take the clutch cover off. But, I've got one of Shroomy's top tips for you. So, let's have a look at the diagram shall we. So, as you see, I've drawn out the shape of the clutch cover, it's not the best shape, but it's close enough. And then I've marked out each one of the bolts. And then, so, as I take them out, because they are all slightly different lengths, all I have to do is pop it through there, and then when I come to put the clutch cover back on, which might not be today, I know which bolt goes in which hole. So, just a little tip, because I was always forgetting which one goes in the right one. A little bit of cardboard like that, I've punched a hole in just to make it easier to get the bolt through, but well handy to know. So, let's crack on, we're getting the clutch cover off. Okay, so, first bolt's out, and that is going straight in there. And now I'll crack on and do the rest of them. So, there we go, all our screws out of our clutch cover. All we need to do now is take it off. I will get it off. <laughs> There we go, one clutch cover off. Now, time to have a look at that clutch, see if there's any problems with it. Okay, so now I've got to start taking the clutch part. I've got to take this circle about, and then uh, get to the middle, there's a 30 mil nut I've got to try and undo. And then, uh, yeah, we can start taking the clutch apart. So, let's see how we get on. Almost, nearly did it. Bloody thing. There we go. Nightmare. Joys of being left-handed. There we go. One piece out. Got your fresh washers and push rod. And then 
the big 30 mil nut. So, fingers crossed, I've actually got the right nut that fits. So, oh, first time, look, good stuff. Right, now I've got to put the bike in gear, stop it all turning, and then uh, try and get it undone. This is going to be rather tight. Right, so, I've got my handy extendable ratchet. And now I'm going to try and get this undone. So wish me luck. <sighs> Might have to move around for this one a bit. There we go. And she's gone. So, this has actually got um, a little dot mark where it pushes it over the threads to, to lock it in because obviously you don't want your clutch nut coming undone. So that's why that one was a bit tight just to get past that. But now it's off, it should just wind off with my fingers almost. Nice and easy now. There we go. And then, you might be able to see there, there's a little dot to stop the thread coming undone. So once you get it past that bit, it comes off nice and easy. Haha, -ha, we got it out. A little bit fiddly, but away we go. <coughs> now, this was a problem I was most afraid of. There's three tiny little screws in there which allow you to get the clutch springs out and then take this plate off and then you can actually get to the fibres and the stills. Someone's been in there and they are awfully chewed up so yeah I'm not sure if we're going to get these undone so bear with me. Okay so these three little screws uh, just in here, hopefully you can see it on this shot. They are properly rounded up, but I'm going to get a screwdriver that's the appropriate fit, and then uh, just hope I can get them out because otherwise it's going to be an absolute nightmare. So it just shows someone has been in here, um, as I was a bit suspicious as why the clutch was slipping because uh, I've had bandits of this sort of mileage before and the clutch is fine. Um, it's recently had an oil and filter change and. I was a bit suspicious they'd use fully synthetic oil and not semi-synthetic oil because that will make a clutch slip on a bandit because they are an older bike. Um, but obviously someone has been in here at some point in the bike's life so might not be the original clutch or they might not have done something right. But uh, at least if I can get these screws out I'll be able to put the clutch back together. Although I'm not putting those screws back in. I'll have to order some brand new ones from Suzuki. So... Wish me luck. Oh, thank God for that. Oh. Now I'm not sure if you can act. Nearly dropped it in your arm. Now, I'm not sure if you can see that, but they are properly rounded off. I'll try and get a macro shot of that later, just to show you all, or, or to cut in now. But they are quite bad. And we're winning on the second one. Again, horribly chewed up. It almost doesn't look like there's enough room for a Phillips in there. So, again, I'll uh, I'll do a cutting shot to show you how bad they are. And you can see where someone's been chewing it up because there's loads of silvery metal bits on my finger. So, all right, last one. Now these are under tension, so hopefully this one will be alright as well. Oh. Oh. 
it's moving. There we go. Look, see the clutch, all the pressure come off the clutch there, and it's all spinning around. There we go. Oh, well, threads don't look great on there, like mate. He's proper minced them in, but again. I don't know if you, how well you can see that, but they are pretty chewed up. So, turn the torch off. Now, I can take this centerpiece out just here. You can see where the three screws go. Then, we have our springs, our diaphragm, diaphragm springs. Now, in the Bandit 600, we've actually got coil springs, which are much easier to take the clutch apart just for, like that. So, let's see if we've got any markings on them. No. Fair enough. Right. Although, looking at that, it's pretty bad. If you can see where the surface there that mates with this cup here, just like that they really are shiny and you can actually see from an angle and they're not quite as thick as they used to be whereas that one if you look at the difference between them possibly I'll do a cutting shot just so you can they're uh, lovely and smooth and how they should be so we found something in there that isn't quite right which always makes me happy when I've got a problem that you find something that's not quite right so let's carry on Right, so, next part. There we go. Right, so we've got all, apart from one fibre out, so. Put the little ring at the back. Very important piece, because the last fibre is actually a slightly different size and that sits in the middle of it. There we go. Lovely job. So yeah, as you can see, that ring sits just there because the fibres are slightly different size to the rest of them. So there we go. Don't forget, washer on the back. Right, okay, so what I'm going to do now is inspect the old clutch and then take a look at our shiny new clutch that uh, we got from wemoto.com. Okay, so we got the clutch apart. Uh, found a couple of things that would suggest there's uh, a problem or, or why the clutch is slipping. So I'll... Um, I'll show you through them now. One thing I did find uh, is the three screws that hold the uh, diaphragm springs in and the rest of the clutch. They were really rounded out. So the next thing that there's a problem with is the diaphragm springs. If we have a quick look at this one here, it looks lovely and smooth and the metal pretty well is all one colour. Whereas if we look at this one here, you can see where the teeth have been chewed up and they're actually visibly smaller you can see where something's clamped down on them and compressed the steel so that could be one reason why the clutch is slipping so next um, are the fibers and the steels I can't actually check the tolerances of the steels because I don't have a flat enough surface but we'll show you those in a minute it's the fibers as you can see here don't look too bad without measuring them and checking the uh, the tolerance of them but they look pretty good condition the steels on the other hand you can see there's a lot of a lot of transfer there from the steels changing the color and you can actually feel it's it's quite thick but most of the rest of them are pretty good apart from the occasional one here if you can see it in the shot there's slight discoloration of the steels and on this one, you can see where there's a few shiny bits around it. And then if I keep going, 
Uh, there's this one here. This one again has got some discoloration and there's a few shiny bits on the steel. That one, if we look there, you can see where the steel's been getting hot and discoloured. It's gone all purple and all sorts of colours. And again, the fibres look pretty good, but it's the steels where we have the most problems. Again, you might be able to see just there, there's some discoloration from where they've been getting hot. There's a bad one. <laughs> there we go, you can really see it on the edge of that one and the edge there where they've been getting discoloured. And so there's obviously been a bit of heat and they could possibly be warped. So the next thing to do is put our shiny new clutch in. Okay, so we got rid of the uh, horrible old clutch that's slipping, and now we have our lovely new gecko clutch that we've got from Wemoto.com. We've been soaking it in oil for about 24 hours now. We're using some Putylene Sport 4 uh, 10W40 semi synthetic oil, which is the right stuff for this Bandit 1200. So that'll be going back together. We've also got a new EBC diaphragm springs. These are the heavy duty ones. So you might feel a little bit more pressure under the lever, but it's definitely going to uh, stop the clutch from slipping. And now we have our big stack of steels. Now we've got two packs of steels. These are a different thickness to these two, and these are the fifth and the sixth plate in if I can remember what I just read in the book um, and they are actually different thicknesses still so I'm going to have to put those in order when I put the clutch back together so that is what I'm going to do next week so as I need to order some screws from Suzuki to put the bike back together I'm going to call it a day for part six of the bandit project and get them ordered and then next week I'm going to put the clutch back together with the new screws and the new clutch we got from Wemoto that's been soaking in the putylene oil and then we'll uh, hopefully be able to go out for a ride on it. So as always if you've got any comments or suggestions or any feedback or anything at all let us know in the comments section and we do make sure we read through them and until next week we'll see you later.